Hi everyone, I am Wayne with the Let's Get Growing Group and you are watching The Urban Gardener. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of The Urban Gardener. I wanna thank you all so much for joining with me here today. If you haven't already, please get down below, hit that subscribe button, follow along with more of our garden adventures here on The Urban Gardener. In fact, hit that bell notification so you're notified of upcoming episodes like this one here where we're down visiting with one of our Facebook group contributors, Wayne Elgin. He's got such a great urban gardener and he's been contributing some of the great pictures to our group. So I thought while we were down here, better come and see for ourselves. All right, Wayne. Thanks for joining with us here. It's really great to get the opportunity to be able to come and visit someone who contributes to our Facebook group while I'm here in Los Angeles. Thanks for having us over. Well, thank you very much for coming by and I think you're gonna enjoy as much as Enoch's gonna enjoy my garden, my side and my backyard. So let's look at some of these beautiful things I'm growing right now. So, Excellent, can't right. wait, let's do it. Let's do it. All right guys, so here we are. We're going into my backyard garden. Okay, so follow me. So, as we walk this way, this is my area of tomatoes. Uh, forgive the plane, but that's just the way it is over here. Yeah. So I have, um, this is a, a Japanese uh, Aiko um, tomato. And some of these are a couple from last year. I do have a cherry tomato from last year. In Southern California, we're kind of blessed, but we can keep things growing for a while. So, but a lot of these, I this year I ran late, I had to buy some plants. And then I had some ones that just popped up, which is wonderful, which I love. So I do have a couple here that um, that did pop up here. I, I don't know the name of them <laughs> until they start to bloom and I recognize um, some of these. This is, uh, this is a couple of these couple here. And I love that this monstrosity here is my banana tree. Uh, I, I'll show you the other one. This is a Java. It's supposed to taste like ice cream, uh, vanilla ice cream. Um, hopefully this year I'll get a, a, some bananas. So. As you see here, this is in front of my, my garage here. And so I have peppers here, more peppers, uh, purple peppers here, you can see here. Um, great in the salad, but when you cook them, they turn green. So, but they are beautiful. Some, some nice green um, ones here too, um, right here. And as you can see, I do have some volunteers, eggplants. The tomatoes all volunteer from a compost that I created. And you know, you throw stuff in and you realize, what's this? And this is what happens. Um, but a lot of stuff I grow by seeds. Um, my um, um, zucchini squash, um, some of my peppers. I do have some peppers. If you kind of turn this way, this is kind of my citrus area. Um, I have uh, Meyer lemons. Um, there you'll probably see a couple of blooms here, right here, which is wonderful. And I have, um, this is my kumquat, I believe that's it. And I have, um, as, as you can see here, I'm gonna show you something that's not citrus. I'm gonna talk a little loud of the plane. Yeah. But I have two avocado trees here that I planted this year in buckets. One's in a bucket, one's in a container. Am I blessed? Yes, let me tell you why. Look at this, look at these beauties. They, it'll take a year to get to them. But I have avocados. This is the Haas avocado. And uh, discussing with Enoch, I live off a street called Haas Ave, which is probably a Haas avocado. But this used to be an avocado orchard long ago in the 20s. But I'm excited with this because my neighbor has an avocado tree. But so now I have two, and they are producing avocados for me. I love it. So I have mandarin oranges, grapefruit here. I'll show you one, still on the vine. Look at that. This is a ruby grapefruit, uh, red, uh, real red, red. And I even have more growing right now. You can see, I'll show you right here. That's the thing about citrus here. They grow year round, which I love. So I'm blessed that way. So now we're gonna go into my main garden, which I'm proud. This is where I started, okay? Uh, been gardening for over three years. But even I did some gardening as a little kid, okay? So 
This is my Persian uh, cucumber, and I love it because I, I love to pickle these. My brother has been waiting, I have a younger brother, I've uh, been waiting to have these. And I'll show you a, a couple here, here's one right here, and I'll pull it out. And let me tell you, oh my gosh, that is so delicious. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm gonna laugh because that's so delicious. It is so sweet. You, you realize when you don't when you grow stuff yourself, there's nothing like it. Nothing like it. Okay? Okay, I'm not giving this away to anyway. Anyway. <laughs> so we're gonna continue on. And a lot you can see here, I'm gonna go back here. I make my own trellises. I do something basic, then I add to it. This is a five dollar netting trellis. You just add to it, attach it, and it suffices what you need to do. Another way, repurpose, futon frame. Broke it up, it is now the trellis with the netting. I will be growing some more cucumbers here. Bell peppers are here, nice companion plants. And these will grow up. Um, here's a cucumber. This is growing uh, my uh, lemon cucumbers. Nothing's here yet, but it's starting to flower, which is really nice. Um, I have a friend, she loves them. And so then I just companion plant with more winter squash. Things are starting to flower and peppers too. And on the other side, this is kind of falling over, but these are my beans. Now here's a surprise. I have a I have a, a, a pea plant, which is supposed to be the springtime, it popped up. So I'll see what is, this is looked like a sweet pea. And uh, it'll probably be a pea pod that I'll eventually, oh, hey, I don't have to wait, it's right here. Look at that. That is so uncommon right now because it should not be doing this because it's a little bit warmer. So the, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. So these are my beans. I plant from seeds. They are starting to flower right now. You can see that. Little flower in there. You can see. Let me get. And eventually I'll get more. And then I get some vining ones. You can see, that's why I put the netting up here. Um, they will vine all over, over here. And um, I will just be picking them as they kind of drop from the nets. Okay, so like that. So we are gonna work to my main garden and here you are. This is it. This is my, my love and joy. Um, I wanna just point out this one tree here. This is my nectarine tree. This is my original tree. I planted it three years ago. Never fell since day one. I probably have over 150 nectarines on there. So I'll probably, uh, probably a third of them will fall off, but I'll still, still get about probably a hundred left, which is wonderful. So um, we're gonna swing this way and we're gonna make us a way around. Um, before that, you'll see, I do grow corn. Really? Yes, because corn is really cheap you can buy, but I, my brother loves it. But these are different types of corn. Um, I have one that'll grow in 60 days, then one to grow in 90 days. So once that one 90 days gone, I'll plant something else there. So it will be continuous growing for me. Okay, so that's what I love to do. Sometimes you have to hand pollinate. And we have a couple things growing here, uh, more a, a winter squash. Don't be deceived by the word winter. You should start to grow them in summer <laughs> to get your product in winter. These are, this one's called a, um, uh, a Reba. And there's a, that's the acronym for, I forget what it's called, but these are kind of acorn squash, small and sweet and you'll get a lot from here. So, and then I do have a melon here. It's called, a, 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 I forget the name, Delica de Tabla, de Tab, something like that. But it's supposed to be a sweet, small melon. Here we, here we have uh, um, beans, okay? So I have, uh, um, we have the, uh, what's the burgundy purple and the yellow top. Um, and then I have one's called a Ro Rom Romano, I guess it's called. These are some blinks I'm growing um, new. And uh, I love growing these things because you can just put them, eat them as they go off the vine. They flower very nicely. You can see here, this is the burgundy top, um, which is uh, which is wonderful. These are, you can tell as the flowers dying, the beans are gonna show up. Um, I have the fillet and um, some other ones. So they're all flowering really nice. Like I said, I'm into the winter squash, butternut squash. Here's, here's one growing right here. Hopefully it'll come out to, this is the female right there and hopefully i'll get some um male flowers and start pollinating because i love my butternut squash a um, couple of here and i have some other ones different types um lakota and um, golden herb hurt 
And um, so this is kind of it, closer to that nectarine tree. Oh, I gotta love this. Gotta love that, look at that, look at that. It's just bearing fruit like you got it, you wouldn't believe. Um, some more fruit, apricot, my first year. I replanted these so they are not as productive, but they haven't rooted themselves, but they will. Um, and you'll come over here and more uh, winter squash. And my last bit here is my artichoke plant. Yes, in California, you can grow artichokes. And we, I used to get about 18 to 20 artichokes off a tree. This one letting flower. Bees love, pollinators love them. My love and pride and joy, I plant this three times as a net because the birds are having their heyday and they will not have that. My peach tree. Look, if you can see this, I'm gonna show you this. Look at that color. Look at that. Beautiful color. They are still increasing in size, but they are gonna be very, very sweet. So, but I have to protect them because the birds will say, thank you very much for the dessert. And I go, no way. So anyway, I'm gonna turn this way because this is a new project for me here behind my nectarine tree is more cucumbers. A muncher, I forget the other one's called, but uh, what I will do is, I found this on the street. Japanese little, I think it was a call, but um, I took the material off, I'm staking it with the wood here, and then I'm gonna have this as a vine. That is what you do, why pay for, you know, product when you find stuff people throw away on the street? No, don't do that. Okay, so this is going to work perfectly. The late amount of sun, and it's going to give it enough sun to where it will produce. Because cucumbers don't like a lot of sun, but they like just enough, and you'll have a great harvest. So, I want to show you this one thing is my, my attempt to replant a banana tree. I think it's growing back. Let's, let's pray. <laughs> the big tree, but this is um, maybe about six months old. I'm hoping to get something from that. So... As you can see, I'm a big believer in trees, fruit trees. I have a pomegranate tree. This is the second year. And I do have one. And I'm very careful. There it is. Right there. That one's going to mature nicely. I'm loving it. So I got a couple of other uh, flowers that are blooming. And so I've been told not to water too much. And yes, you can grow watermelons or melons and containers. These are my crimson watermelons. Um, they will vine out down the row um, and then I will protect them to get some nice decent watermelons out there. And also I have um, some other volunteer things in here too which I have no clue because I did it in my compost. But we'll see what happens. I don't know what this is. It's from my compost. I probably had some melon or something in there which it is. And oh, look at that. So now it's done to flower on my crimson, which is really nice. We can get male and females. I wish you had the smell of vision. I know I do. You can smell, you can smell melon from these things, which is wonderful. So um, we're gonna circle around this way. I got a couple of empty bands here because I'm still planting. Um, this is going to be, um, Actually, I'll take, well, I'll just show this because I haven't finished this, you can see this, but this is going to be more beans. This is going to be a vining. I'm going to put another makeshift trellis here. Um, and then I'm going to put uh, a, a, a Cantonelli bean. It's going to bind right up. And in front, I'm going to put some other plants in front of it too, which will let it flow out. So it's all about using that space. You know, I don't have a big space. You may think it's big, but it's not as big as some people have acres or whatever. Um, so this is going to be some more sweet potatoes. I bought some sweet potatoes. This is ready. I'm going to prepare a little bit more, but this is some good soil. I've actually added some of my compost in here and you can see that. And this is, it crumbles which really nicely. You put those sweet potatoes in there, they're going to do very good. And um, this is from my friend Judith. Um, she gave me some sweet potatoes from her garden. I visited her um, and these are doing <laughs> very well. So I'm very happy to get what do I get from these. Um, so this is very nice. And right here are, there are probably one, two, three, probably four eggplant um, plants from last year. 
what you do in California, these are perennials, like peppers. Sometimes I even like tomatoes. You cut them back to the surface, keep water a little bit. When it warms up, they will warm right back up. And then you'll get some, you'll get some nice eggplants here like that here. Um, I think there's another, this is a different type here. That's a different type. And I think there's there's some of these Japanese long ones. So this is, this is getting too fat, but that's ready to eat. Um, but yeah, so these will cut back and you grow and they're wonderful. I love it. So, um, you know, I, that saves me from growing anything else. And as I was talking about corn, these are the different types of corn. As you can see corn here, if you haven't grown corn, this is the silk, the, the, the stalks ready to come up and the silk will come up. And eventually they, as you can see here, I think it's starting to grow. This will be a, a corn that will pop up here. And then the, uh, the, the, uh, the seeds, or I forget what it's called, forget my, my uh, forget the names, but these will pollinate the corn. They're all done when blown. That's how they're done, which is wonderful. So um, I'm gonna pan over here because this is a volunteer tomato plant. Uh, sweet 100, <laughs> it made it a year. No leaves, right? But who cares? Look at that. You don't need leaves sometimes when you get tomatoes at this point. These are delicious. Oh my God, another sweetness. Sorry, spitting on the camera. But these are so, this is too big. But these are so good, it goes great with the cucumber. Mm, something like that. So, an unfinished area. It used to be my old tomato plant area, not anymore. I have done, can you do compost? Sure you can. So this is a, uh, a compost bin pretty much empty but I have compost this here and I'm creating a new one back here um, it's not quite ready I haven't really done but it takes a while to get it that way but it will you'll get some nice nutrients for your plants um, on top incorporated with your regular soil which is wonderful give it moisture everything else um, this one not quite to have bugs and everything else. I need to, you, that's what happens when you don't turn it. But I'm gonna turn that. But see, I have this whole space here. Uh, I'm gonna create, I don't know yet. I may put more fruit trees here, bananas. I don't know. Um, um, I have I have a loquat tree. I have so many things. This is this is my new project, which I'm loving. So this is this is what you do as an, as an urban gardener. You know, say I can't do it. You gotta realize this too. You gotta realize this backyard all used to be covered with grass, all grass. It took me a couple of weeks, yes, a couple of weeks, three years ago, to dig this all up and plant. That's where I started and some of this stuff, but I've never turned back. And you think it's hard in the beginning? Yeah, but it's rewarding at the end. You got that right, because let me tell you, I love it. I will never, someone says, what are you doing? I said, I'm enjoying what I'm doing and I'm benefiting from the nutrition, everything I get from this. So if you think it's wrong, you think it's hard, yes it is, but you will, in the beginning and after that, it'll be easier, it'll be easy peasy as I call it, okay? So I'm, and oh, one more thing here, which I thought I lost, my asparagus. Um, that all didn't grow back, but it did. So I do have a couple, three styles here, and um, I'm looking forward, this is my second year, I'm looking forward to it, the third year, to where I can start harvesting some of this stuff. Do you asparagus, you love asparagus? Once you put it in the ground, you have it for 20 years. Hey, can't beat that, right? I know I can't, and I love asparagus, not a lot of people do. So I hope you have enjoyed my garden, everything I planted, even the bushes here, trees, I planted here, I love it. And um, no one can ever say that I've done anything wrong, and I, I am very happy and satisfied, even doing it by myself, which I do. No one helps me, but I will say, if you have that clone machine, please let me know. because <laughs> I need some help sometimes. But my secret is trying to get my neighbor on the other side here to let me use his backyard because it's bare. I will get it prepared for more vegetables to grow. I am about that close to convince him. So I need some help and praying for that for me too, guys. Alrighty, thank you very much for visiting my garden and um, the urban garden here. And I love you, let's get growing, okay guys? Thank you.
So all right, everybody, how awesome was that tour of this garden growing here in Los Angeles? Wayne, you're growing some amazing things in this garden. I can't believe it. Thank you. You show us so many good pictures. Right. You share with us and contribute to our group so much. Uh -huh. I knew I just you. had to come down here and see your garden. Awesome. But when I got here, I was not expecting that it was going to be this great. This is a great garden, I'm telling you. And you all know, you just saw all of it. This is also a, just a really exceptional use of space. And you're repurposing just all of this really great stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Your purposing is, is, is the, my, it's the name of the game for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I could buy it, I have the money for it, right? But why? Right. Okay, because I, People throw things out that, you know, they say, I have no use for it, but there's always, you can always use it for something else, especially gardener. I mean, you, if you want to go vertical, mm -hmm. I am, you know, I have a lot of space here, but not a lot of space. That's why I expanded to the front, but I want to maximize as much as I can. Yeah. And the only way to do that is to go vertical. I mean, I go yeah. vertical on things that you don't think about going vertical on. Yeah. And, and, you know, and they're like, why are you doing that? I said, I'm growing uh, some, um, watermelons I'm gonna go vertical yeah. um, you know they should be just crawling in vines but no I want the space on the other side that's gonna crawl yeah. for something else exactly. you know I put other plants so that's what you do and that's it's the just best really really optimizing thank you. that space thank you thank you and but having the vision right driving down the road right there's this thing sitting on the side oh, of the road oh. and the first thing coming to your mind is how can I grow a plant on that oh. so I can you know or however yes. else you're using those materials how can I incorporate it into my garden that's what I do people are like is that what you see yes when I see something on the ground especially trash day what you know <laughs> I, it's not trash it's trash for some but it's you know it's not for me and I, I look at I, I'm going to work or something I'm like if I'm gonna be late I'm gonna be I won't be late I'll go to my work but I'm looking I'm looking at that and going oh I think I can put that in my garden yeah. And and if I can at the moment, I'll save it, and I guarantee, if it's not that season, it'll be the next season. I'll I'll put it in my garden, right. and I have done that. It's, you have seen around my garden. That's what I've done. I collected through the years. Yeah. And I, I did. Oh, yeah. All of this great <laughs> stuff. So great yeah. stuff, and that's the yeah great thing about you know gardening is also being able to envision some of that sort of stuff to yeah. to really optimize our gardening space yeah. you've done a really great job thank you and if everybody sees all these great things that he's got growing here you'd also uh, think that you've been gardening like your whole life that is not true um, <laughs> you know um, I have been gardening for over three years mm -hmm. um, and of what you see here yeah but my true gardening was when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, I I believe I did show you behind my garage. It was kind of a uh, a dirt patch, if you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a couple of compost bins I've created uh, for raised beds. Yeah. And that place behind my garage is um, where I garden. That's why it's this little kid. I told my mom, my stepdad, I said, hey, I want to grow some stuff, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> and they're like, okay, go to it. And they provided seeds yeah. and you know, I don't remember everything, but right. I I amended the soil with the shovel and everything so else. So wait a minute. So you're telling me that this area and this garden right. is where you grew up too? Oh yes. Yeah. So this yeah, just to let you know. Wow. <laughs> this house that I live in is uh, I grew up here. So this house was built in '44, but my parents uh, they moved here in 1965. Yes, I am that old. <laughs> I'm getting close to 60. And I'm real coming up, you know. But um, I grew up here. Um, I moved away, yes. a career, yep. everything else, and live in different cities, states. Uh, circle back is life. You circle back, and my mother took care of my mother. Um, we both owned the house, and I ended up right back in the house I grew up in. It was my dream. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I knew the area, I knew the weather. Mm -hmm. I lived in some hot places. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a heat person. I love the cold. Not that much cold. But I knew this would be yeah. what I wanted. Yeah. So this was perfect. And that was and the agreement. That, you've got that already like vision of garden growing food from when you were a young kid. Right. Right in back behind the garage exactly. there. Doing all that stuff from when right. you were young. Right. So now here life is kind of circled back exactly. around. You're exactly. back in your childhood home. Right. Yes. And here's those dreams of gardens again. You got it. You got it. And let me tell you, the dreams of that has mean it means that 
I don't go to the grocery store anymore. Yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, I, I, I don't shop there. I shop for my brother because I take care of him. Yeah. But for me, what you see here is what I eat. Um, mm -hmm. Looking for those chickens, I'm trying to get that. But, <laughs> yes. um, but all these vegetables, I incorporate them in all my meals. I'm talking about lunch, uh, and breakfast, dinner. Um, I incorporate that. If I don't have something, I will substitute it. Yeah. Why go to the store for something? Because you know it's, you don't have it. You, you grow it, it, mm -hmm. it. You make it work, you make and it that's work. sustainability for yourself. Yeah. Um, and, and people are like, ah, oh, does that take a lot of time? No. I mean, you, the vegetables are just, yeah, booming and just bursting with flavor uh, that you never thought about. Uh, you probably saw in the video where the cucumbers where I just. My mind exploded yeah. <laughs> when, when I bit into that. It's so good. It was huh? I'm like going, whoa! It was, yeah. you, know, you know, like because I you just don't expect. And everybody who grows a garden really knows that, you know. And that's right. the thing that when you get right. food and you're growing right. yourself, right. and it, it's just it tastes better. It's just better. Right. And and you know a lot of that just also comes from the effort. Yes. That, that you put into yes. it yourself. Yes. You yes. know, and, yeah. and, and not only are you really getting all this great nutritious right. food, but this has got to be a great place for like, you know, just mentally that Zen type of place, right? Oh, yeah. When like I, where you I, lose I, yourself, right? Well, when I wake up in the morning, this is what I do. I, you know, I walk outside sometimes before I have a cup of coffee, yeah. always before the shower, of course, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'll walk my garden. I'll see what has transpired from the day before to the next day. You know, and that, you know, that including, you know, bugs or whatever, but I look at what has grown, what is not growing. Yeah. And then I, I walk the front, everything, and then I think about those things and I may come back later and to realize, oh, I've done that right. What have I done wrong? And you kind of figure it all out, you know, yeah. and then some things you don't figure out right away. Yeah. But that is how, and like you said, mental state, right? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, you know, because I know some days could be chaotic for me and yeah. for all of us. Yeah. But this sets my tone. Mm hmm It sets my tone to where I am at that even kill. Yeah. And then I, from that point, I can make it through the whole day. I'm out. Sometimes by 8, I don't return till 7. Yeah. And so I have, I have <laughs> built that energy that lasts me all day. Yeah. And if somebody sucks some energy away, I still have tons more. And then if it is, I can come to my garden. Come back and recharge, right? Recharge, yeah. Recharge. I love that. So Exactly. And, you know, and the thing, too, kind of something we did discuss kind of off camera a little bit ago, though, right. too, is that we're kind of similar in the fact that we've got busy minds. Right. Things are just going on for yeah. us. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. that's one of the things I find for my garden as well. It's just right. so, works so well when I'm just, there's just so much chaos going on. Yeah. I just go in and just start doing something, get my hands in the soil, you know, work on some little project in the yeah. garden, and then I'm just kind of relieved. Right. You know, and like you said, it's always best too to kind of, you know, start your day right. and end, end your day, day right. with those sort of uh, mental, right. you know, kind of release. I, I was telling you not that, um, you know, I have one day off, you know, it's, it's a life I have. It's, I'm good with that. But my one day off, most people say, Oh, you should relax, right? Yeah. Just take it easy. <laughs> Sit on the couch. Gardener. But not for gardener. But <laughs> but gardening is my relaxation. It is. I mean, yeah. I I could get up at six in the morning still. Why? Because I do. <laughs> but you know what? I then I'll head have my breakfast, make sure everything's okay. I'll head to the garden, and I could start in my garden at eight or nine o'clock. And I won't return until eight o'clock at night, back yeah. inside the house. Oh, don't forget, I'll eat. Okay, you can tell. <laughs> well, but, you can eat right <laughs> along the way. Hey, that sometimes you can eat right along the way. But you know, then I'm like, I don't feel tired. People yeah. are like, how did you go out there for twelve hours, eight hours? I said, because it's it's nothing. It's just part of me. Mm -hmm. it, it becomes part of you, you know. And it's it, you know, like it, your heart is innate. It beats like that. Yep. And this is the same thing. It, it's just it's just I don't think about it. And before you know it, you're like. Oh, I've got to go in. You know, the, the sun is down, and you know, yeah. the, you know, my, my brother's worried, or you know, you just like, yeah. you really need to relax, really relax more, and uh, oh, you need to eat. Yeah, you I've know. gone to those times where you know, I, I just get so, so like, into what I'm doing out there in the garden. Sometimes, yeah. you don't really notice until you just can't see anything anymore. Oh. The sun's gone down; it's oh, yeah. dark, and you're just still going. And like, yeah. wait a minute, I can't see in front of me yeah. anymore. Yeah. I better, I better stop now and get back to this later. Well, let me tell you. But that's how involved, yeah. the, you know, we can get when we're really passionate about our gardens. Well, you know, if you haven't noticed, you know, if you're here at nighttime, I've put up more lights. I have regular sconces on the side, but I have, 
you don't see them, but I have put up these solar little stick lights, you know, oh. that last about five, six. I just put some other ones up. This so the you other can day. extend your nighttime exactly. garden. Exactly, nighttime you know? garden. And then, of course, I don't have it in the front, right? Yep. So what do I do? I have one of those minor. Yes. <laughs> and one of those, and I go, I actually I go, use those click. to hunt slugs yeah, and stuff. Yes. So I'll put those yeah. on and get so out like, at night and do that. Like I was planting something in the front last night. And I'm like, <laughs> I can't see. I can't. I need to finish planting. So I grab it. I wrap it around my head. And, and people are like, what is wrong with you? I like that attitude. Nothing's going to stop me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I do. So. That's excellent, Wayne. Yeah. So, what, so yeah. much great stuff here. It's such right. a really great tour, a look around your right. garden. Um, let's, have, let's see real quick. Um, what is it you think, because you're pretty new to gardening in a sense right. as far as you've come back to it and you've been doing it for about three years now. Right. What would you say is the one thing within that process in the last three years that you've learned the most about with your garden? I have taught myself to be patient, mm -hmm. okay, um, and um, don't let the failures, yeah. um, you know, um, stop you from continuing. Mm -hmm. I look at a failure as something as, you know, pick learning, up, learn expenses, uh, learning you know, opportunity. opportunity. And yeah. I pick up from there and I realize, what did I do? Uh, what happened? Mm -hmm. And then you can go from there. Yeah. You pick yourself back up. You kind of go, okay. Instead of like, I can't do this anymore. Okay, my biggest thing I was telling you, tell you not that I can grow a couple of things. Uh, soybeans, yeah. edamame, I love them. I showed him and you didn't see that. But I always buy the plants. Okay, guilty as sin. But that's, right. that's it. That's all right. It's not the rule of that. I, yep. you know, you gotta start from starts. I, I do it every year. I haven't given yep. up. But this year, I have about four plants growing. I am so excited. I am so giddy because of that. You know, because <laughs> I'm like, wow. Okay, those, those little plants. accomplishments. Yeah. Those little things that you're able to kind of, in a sense, like you said, whether it's you know, failures, yeah. uh, things that we consider in that sort of sense are learning opportunities in the garden. And that's one right. thing I think too, and I think kind of in what you're saying in a sense is that, um, you know, um, gardening really isn't that complicated. No. When we're new to gardening, we see things, we're worried about things, we're really involved with our plants, but these are all little learning opportunities right. to figure that sort of stuff yeah. out. And then when we just let it go, it becomes a lot easier. Right. And then we're able to figure things out a lot, a lot more, I think, in the long run. Yes. Once we just kind of let the what those complicated thoughts about gardening kind of go right and just learn from things as we go because that's all it should be about right and and here's the thing with anything in life mm -hmm. you, you know you we all love to take on a big challenge right yeah. I love taking on big challenges oh, but how do you look how do you take the big challenge you have to break it down into segments you know yep. a b c d whatever you whatever business plan you have yep. you have to start small and then before you know it, it has, it, you know, you got all the pieces together and then you have expanded to what you mm -hmm. want. You kind of go, wow, I, this is, I did all this. I want to mention one more thing is that your knowledge of what you have learned, you can teach others. Mm -hmm. And I, the reason why I say that because I have some great nieces and nephews, yes, great nieces and nephews, <laughs> um, that they live in Bakersfield. Okay. Yeah. And uh, my niece said, we want to grow a garden. My children want to grow garden, you know, vegetables and garden. Can you come up and help? Yeah. I said, sure. Absolutely. Let me tell you, they send me some pictures today. <laughs> um, may put me the shame. Oh, really? Yes. Their, their zucchini plants are just out of control. Wow. And, you know, and uh, you know, because I, I helped them, yeah. I bought all the plants, and I told them yeah. what to do. I mended, I showed, I mended the soil. I showed them all these things. And they are just smart ladies and gentlemen that they knew what to do and fantastic. And I said, you guys are naturals. But it was rewarding yeah. to see what they have done of just me showing them some things. And then they took the ball and rolled with it. You handed that down. Yes. And they, and they actually, they emailed me and said, is this right? I said, yeah, you're doing great. You know, and let me give you a couple more pointers. And I said, and I always, and the thing you do, encourage them. Fantastic. Encourage them, be real encouraging them. Say, yeah. you have done a great job. Exactly. And they have done a great job. And I tell you, you know, I was shocked. <laughs> I really was really shocked. <laughs> and again, like you said, it's so fulfilling again, back, yeah. you know, coming back around. You've taken a little bit of knowledge, these yeah. things that you've learned along the way. You've yes. handed it down to someone and you're watching them 
be yeah. successful. Yes. And that's a really valuable thing here. Yes. And one of the biggest things I love about the gardening community ultimately is we're all really out to try to help each other. Yeah. To escape the city. We're all really out to help each other succeed. Yes. And that is right. one of the great things I love about this. I really love the gardening community all together. There's no meetup I've had so far yet that has <laughs> been not just a wonderful experience with someone right. like yourself, Wayne, right. who's right. Thank brought you. the Urban Gardener audience right into their garden Thank to share you. with us. And again, also to help encourage others to get out there and grow your own food because Please. there is a level of sustainability that you can attain yes. if you're really out there reaching for it. Yes. And again, Wayne, thanks again for having us here. Thank you very much for visiting. It's been a pleasure. I really appreciate it. Excellent. You know, I love meeting my fellow gardeners. You know, yep. and, and there you go. Everybody, yes. get down below in that description because there's a link down there to the Let's Get Growing Facebook group for the Urban Gardener channel here. And go join Wayne and contribute some pictures, get some advice, ask questions if you need to, or answer some questions if you can. And get involved with other gardeners in our gardening community here yeah. on the Urban Gardener. And let's grow this thing. Yes. Right? Yes, you got let's it. Let's grow this thing. And if you've all enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that like button. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything at all, get down in that comment section below. I'd love to hear from all of you. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Get down there, hit that subscribe button. Follow along with more of our garden adventures. Yes. Here on the Urban Gardener. And I'll see you all on the next one. Enjoy. It's so exciting to see someone yeah. excited about what they're doing, right. and it just portrays so much in your tour that you gave. I mean, you just, this is really your spot. It's my Cheshire Cat smile, <laughs> but I do, because I, I, I beam, because I, I'm proud of what I've done, and, and um, it wants to be proud of that. And it really is wonderful, and I'm like, oh, this is great, you know, and I'm like, I did it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, though, you have a right to be proud. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm always hard on myself. But <laughs> <laughs> That's no, good. This is fantastic, right, that was man. A... Oh, plane. <laughs> I know, huh? Not only that one, but look right up above you. Oh, yeah, that's the one over how That was crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> We're getting a double time. One there <laughs> and one over there. Actually, they go to one fucking night. Can you do that crap? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, and I thought I had it bad.